which is minus 1, 0. So something very special happened here. The thing that's uh, the, the, this, el this uh, element, where, which is 0 in the first coordinates, uh, produce something which is 0 in the second coordinate. Okay, And so um, if these are the real numbers, something that isn't real, when you multiplied by itself, gave something that was a negative real. Right? So we're beginning to see that this field has a very interesting property. If I call this creature i, you can't stop me from doing that, <laughs> then what I see is that i squared is, if you like, minus 1, uh, if I think about this as uh, a real number. As a, sub, as a special subfield, here under the correspondence where I think about it as the real number. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. And so um, we normally write, because of this, we often write uh, a plus bi for the element a comma b. This is the, the, the co more usual way of writing a comma b. We'll write it as a plus bi. Because after all, isn't it 1, 0 plus 0 uh, plus, isn't it a 0 plus b times 0, 1? OK. All right. Great. And uh, if we do that, we, we still do the following. We still think about a complex number as an ordered pair. It's just that. It has a part here that uh, in the first coordinate behaves like the real numbers. So we think of this as the real, uh, the real part. And um, it has another part, which because it's not the real part, we think of it as um, oh, the um, imaginary part. And this term, by the way, arose because it, in, in a very derogatory fashion, right? You know, it basically, um, uh, uh, I can't remember who the, which mathematician it was, but the mathematician who first coined this term basically said, oh, you know, imaginary, that part's imaginary as if it really didn't have useful purpose, although we see now these days that it does have served useful purpose, and there's nothing imaginary about it. It's all part of some construction. Okay. Okay. Um, good. Well, there's there's also uh, several geometric notions associated with this uh, with this creature. So, if z is a plus b i will define z bar to be a minus b i. So the, um, the imaginary part gets negated, and this is called the conjugate of z. Okay. And I should mention then, if you write this as uh, a plus b i, a is called the real part of z, sometimes denoted r e z, and b is denoted m z, which stands for the imaginary part of z. The real and imaginary part of z is what? They're they're both real numbers, aren't they? Okay. The imaginary part refers to the coefficient of i. Okay. Great. So uh, just to test, uh, to test uh, our understanding here, if you take the conjugate of the conjugate of z, what do you get? Z, because the imaginary part of z conjugate is what? It's minus b. Okay, so you negate that and you get back b. So the conjugate lives down here. If this is z, this is z bar. It's down down here. Just. Uh, uh, reflection around the real axis. Okay, great. Lots of uh, things here you can check about the complex numbers. 
and I'll just let you check these things. It's very easy, but conjugation plays nice with addition and multiplication. So it's a very natural uh, operation. So if I take the conjugate of, of z plus w, that's just the same thing as conjugating first and then adding uh, the numbers. If I take the product and conjugate, that's the same as, believe it or not, taking the conjugates and multiplying. Again, you can check all these things very easily with this, this uh, definition. Right? Okay. So conjugation plays nice. Um, a few other things you might do. Oh, by the way, I put periods here because this is a complete thought, right? This equals this, period. Okay. Um, if I want to pick off the real part, you can add the conjugates to itself to pick off the real part. This gives twice the real part of z. And what if I want uh, the imaginary part? Can I define that in terms of conjugation? Yeah, how about z minus z bar? And that gives twice i times the imaginary part of z. Okay. But perhaps the most uh, useful uh, uh, property of conjugation is that when you multiply something by its conjugate, what do you get? What happens if you multiply a plus bi times a minus bi? You get, it's a difference of squares, a squared minus bi squared. But bi squared is minus b squared, so that's just a squared plus b squared. Oh, really? Nice. Uh, the thing to notice about this is that this is always real, the real number, and it's always bigger than or equal to 0. And in fact, if you think about this in this particular picture, you think about one, uh, one side here as A and the other side as B. Oh. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> then what do you notice about the hypotenuse? It's the square root of this creature, right? So in fact, we will define the length of z, the absolute value of z, we'll say. That's what we usually say for this, or the length. Uh, the magnitude of a complex number is just going to be z dot z bar to the 1 half. OK? Everybody with me? Oh, hey, that's kind of nifty. In fact, this length corresponds with the geometric notion of length if you just thought about the complex numbers as the real numbers, right? Uh, the R2, the, the real plane. Okay, so it's, it coincides. It's the same as the length in R2. Okay, and what you see is I can find the length squared just by multiplying z times z conjugate. Okay, so in physics, this property is used a lot. Right, if you want to find the, 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 the magnitude, the amplitude of some, uh, whatever it is, complex waveform, right? You can multiply something by its conjugate, right? Okay. Oh, okay. This also suggests something. It suggests that if I wanted to define um, 